Hey, this is Pastor Jeff Daniel of Kingdom Light Church. Get ready for a destiny molding, destiny shaping, destiny impacting, and destiny transforming word of God today. In Kingdom Light Church, you will always know the truth, the truth that will set you free. Now, let's get ready for the word that will bring light to your life. You're blessed in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Father, fill us up today. Fill us up, fill us up, fill us up. We can run on an empty tank. We can function with an empty tank. Fill us up with your presence. Fill us up with your anointing. Fill us up with your word. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Oh Father, we thank you today. And we give you praise. In Jesus name amen hallelujah you may be seated hallelujah welcome to church this beautiful Sunday morning God is a good God amen hallelujah you know um, at the beginning of, are we still in the beginning of the year okay at the beginning of the at the very very much beginning of the year uh, the Lord spoke to me, and uh, I sat down with Pastor Dom, and we decided to embark on that pattern which the Lord had instructed us to do every month. And that is, every last Sunday of the month is going to be family enhancement service. Amen? Every last Sunday of the month is going to be family enhancement service. And uh, I think the last, the first episode we talked about anger deal with your anger that was what pastor dominic taught on i'm sure many of you have forgotten uh, by the way you are looking at me but that's fine go to youtube the message is there glory be to god hallelujah and so uh we are progressing today we are still embarking on the same enterprise of our family enhancement service and today we have a Plenty of things to do today. Uh, there's two different segments. The segment you are seeing here as one episode, and then there's going to be another segment, which is where the families. Remember, I said every family come with your anointing oil for every family. They will embark on that, and then um, trusting God that we should be good by what we are supposed to do on this particular Sunday. Amen. And so today. Uh, we're going to be focusing on family devotion. Okay? It's going to be family devotion. And so, uh, if you will please put your hands together for uh, Rema as he come up here. Where is Mr. Rema? Give him a microphone and then they'll come here. Give Rema, yeah, right here there's a microphone. While Rema is on his way, Zoe, can you come up please? Hallelujah. Yes, put your hands together for Zoe. You should have a microphone already. And then put your hands together for Mr. Word. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Grab a microphone. I hope you've queued everything. Amen. Hallelujah. Is it looking sharp or what? <laughs> Amen. Hallelujah. Okay, let's see. Can you, let's make a little bit of adjustment. That's what we do. Pastor V is going to be, you want to be here or in the middle? Be, well, that's how it happens at home. We fight. I want to sit here. I want to sit there, so, but we're going to do that. So, put, I'm going to give you this microphone. Hallelujah. The Lord is a good God. Amen. Hallelujah. <laughs> Bishop, any comment? Thank you so much. All right, put your hands together for Pastor V. She's uh Usually when this kind of scenario happened at home, I am screaming from somewhere, go and sit down, stand for prayer. But because we're in the church, I can't do that. You know? 
Yeah, usually that's how it, it goes, you know. Somebody wants to go, when it's time for prayer, can I go use the restroom? No, it's not time for restroom now. Why is Zoe? She's in the room. Go get him. No. Zoe, come here. We don't need to go get them. It's time for prayer. The point is this. No matter the scenario, still make sure you do the devotion. Amen? Hallelujah. Last week, Sunday, after service, I slept, and I had another encounter. Very beautiful encounter. In that encounter, God took me to... A scenario that looks like this, which was a pattern that I was brought up in. Uh, when I was in my last year in um, high school, the government decided that they don't have enough money to sponsor the boarding system that was operating in the northern part of Nigeria. So every family have to find somewhere to keep their children if they were in their last year in their high school. So my father has a friend. And that, uh, my father's friend, uh, his father, that's my father's friend's father, was the first pastor in that region where I went to high school. He was the first pastor in that area. So, and the man happens to be my, the son now is my father's friend. So, my father took me to that house, you know, to stay while I do my last year in um, high school. And, uh, I thought I had escaped something that was happening at home. Because, of course, when I was in high school, if I was not at home, I decided when to do devotion. That is, if I ever did. Uh, but now, I went to my final year. I was put in a house where now I'm a big boy. But hey, in the morning, we had devotion. In the night, after food, If you have anywhere you wanted to go, and parents, they would normally know that. So what we do, the children, we make arrangements that once we finish eating, let's all go to where we do prayer. Meanwhile, other days, they'll be looking for us to come. But when we have an appointment to go somewhere, we'll be the one to go and sit down and be waiting for prayer time. Anyway, on Sunday, in that encounter, I was singing. I was singing one of the powerful songs that we used to sing during our devotion in that man's house. We're singing that song. So powerful. It's about the cross. It's about thanksgiving. So I know we are definitely in alignment for what you're about to see today. Please pay attention and just see and learn from it and then adopt what you see. Amen? Glory be to God. Amen? Are you ready? All right. Hallelujah. Amen. God is a faithful God. Uh, in our home, this is what we do. Since we had word as a baby, um, we have always had devotion. Before we even had word, we always had a devotion together. When word came, he grew into the family, and so is Zoe and Rema. So this morning, normally we read a book. In our house right now, we're reading the book of Daniel. And, uh, and every day, we read, we read the book of Proverbs. Proverbs has 31 uh, chapters. So we take a chapter, sometimes because we are too busy, like we just finished the 40 days prayer and fasting. Okay, mama, come here. Every day, we have the 40 days prayer and fasting going on. So we are in church. The children are in church. Amen. So sometimes we missed out. But what we do, we catch up. What, what's today's date again? Today is 29. So since today is 29, we're going to read Proverbs 29. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. We're reading the book of Daniel. Where are you again in the book of Daniel? Huh? Where did you stop in the book of Daniel? Chapter 10. What about you? I can't hear you. Put your microphone. Your microphone is working? I can't hear 11. Okay. Zoe, where are you in the book of Daniel? Nine. Book of Daniel, nine. Can you remember the last thing you read? Your microphone, please. Can you remember? You don't want to talk about it right now? Okay. All right. 
Since though we don't want to talk about the book of Daniel right now, we'll just go straight into the book of Proverbs. Since today is uh, Proverbs 29, we're going to read Proverbs 29. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. How many verses do we have in Proverbs 29? 27. 27 divided by four. By four. I know. Somebody can read uh, one more or two more. So how many are you going to read? Okay, you start. May the Lord bless the reading, okay? reading of his word. Proverbs chapter 29. Okay. Whoever remains stiff-necked after many rebukes will suddenly be destroyed without remedy. When the righteous thrive, the people rejoice. When the wicked rule, the people groan. A man who loves wisdom brings joy to his father, but a companion of prostitutes squanders his wealth. By justice, a king gives a country stability, but those who are greedy for bribes tear it down. Those who flatter their neighbors are spreading nets for their feet. Evildoers are snared by their own sin, but the righteous shout for joy and are glad. The righteous care about justice for the poor, but the wicked have no such concern. What version did you just read? NIV. NIV, okay. we read. What version are you going to read? NIV. Why did we switch to NIV? Okay, go ahead. Mockers stir up a city, but the wise turn away anger. If a wise person goes to court with the fool, the, rage, the fool rages and scoffs, but there is no peace. The bloodthirsty hate a person of integrity and seek to kill the upright. Fools give full vent to their rage, but the wise bring calm in the end. If a ruler listens to lies, all his officials become wicked. The poor and the oppressor have this in common. The Lord gives sight to the eyes of both. If a king judges the poor with fairness, his throne will be established forever. A rod and a reprimand impart wisdom, but a child left undisciplined disgraces his mother. When the wicked thrive, so is sin. Why do you ask her to stop? Okay, you can hear you. What's wrong with your microphone? Discipline your children, and they will make, give you peace. They will bring you the delights of you desire. Where there is no revelation, people cast off restraint, but blessed is the one who heeds wisdom and instruction. Servants cannot be corrupted by mere words. Though they understand, they will not respond. Do you see someone who speaks in haste? There is more hope for a fool than for them. A servant pampered from youth will turn out to be an insolent, an angry person stirs up conflict, and a hot-tempered person commits many sins. Pride brings a person low, but the lowly in spirit gain honor. Where, where did you stop, 24? I read 24? Okay, 24. Whoever is a partner with a thief hates his own life. He swears to tell the truth, but reveals nothing. The fear of man brings a snare. But whoever trusts in the Lord shall be saved. 26. Many seek the ruler's favor, but justice for man comes from the Lord. An unjust man is an abomination to the righteous, and he who is upright in the way is an abomination to the wicked. Glory be to God. Rema, what's stood out to you? What stood out to me was verse... Um, verse 14. What does it say? If a king judges the poor with fairness, his throne will be established forever. What does that mean? It means that if someone is fair and then they judge people with, um, like they're truthful and they're honest, then they will, they will live a long life. Can you relate it to school? Mm -hmm. No? Zoe, what stood out to you? Um, a verse that stood out to me was verse 12. If a, ruler, if a ruler listens to lies, all his officials become wicked. That's basically saying that someone who's in charge, if they do things that are incorrect, those who are under them, they'll also do those same things, and it just leads them nowhere. Okay. Word. Is that the only one that stood out to you for now? Look yeah. at another uh, uh, verse. Word. What stood out to you? Uh, verse 13. What the poor and the oppressor have this in common. The Lord gives sight to the eyes of both. What does that mean? It means that all men are created equal and everybody's made the same. We all believe the same and breathe the same. Hallelujah. I want to read verse 2. 
I want you guys to look again if there's another verse you want to talk about. Rema, look at one word. Zoe, look at one. Meanwhile, let me read verse 2. He said, when the righteous are in authority, the people rejoice. But when a wicked man rules, the people groan, just like Putin. Can you imagine that wicked man and every evil that he's doing? Hallelujah. Amen. People like him. People like him. Go ahead. You found another one? You've not found another one? Look, Rema. Go ahead, word. So we have to find another one. Luke, we're going to give two to them. We'll pray. Verse 11, it says, Fools give full vent to the rage, but the wise bring calm in the end. What does that mean, Baba? It means only a fool will give into his emotions and uh, give into their anger all the time, and a wise person will uh, keep her cool. Isn't that cool? Say it again. Mm. Fools give uh, full full attention to their rage and emotions and let the wise stay calm. And you tell them the meaning again? Is that what you just said? Okay. You find one? Verse 15 says, A rod and a reprimand impart wisdom, but a child left undisciplined disgraces, disgraces its... Okay. What that you? means that if someone isn't disciplined, they won't know what to do. the church and tell them. If so, no. Okay, go ahead. You can look at me. If someone isn't disciplined, then they won't know what to do. And that's right. Yeah, say it again. If someone isn't disciplined, then they won't know the right way to go. If you don't discipline your child, they won't know the right way to go. Mm -hmm. Amen. So his Rema is telling us that we need to discipline our children. And hallelujah. Zoe, is there another one you've seen that you want to share? I didn't hear. Can you say it again? Who just said? Or say your own in another way. Huh? Just say it another way. It, we can. Huh? Okay, that's fine. All right, let us pray. Is there anything I need to know about school? Everything's going on good? No bullies? Okay, no. Oh, oh sorry, we're done with school. I forgot. Forgive me. Okay, let us pray. Let us pray. Who's going to sing for us? Word. Sing a song for us. Put the microphone. Let's hear you. So we give him his microphone. Um, we are little lovers and uh, we just go with the flow. <laughs> it's not easy when we sit in front of you all. Amen. Okay, go ahead. Let's sing, then we'll pray. And as we worship your throne. And as we worship your throne. And as we worship your throne. Come, Lord Jesus, and take your place. As we worship, and as we worship, build your throne. Father, build your throne, and as we worship, build your throne. Oh, Father, build your throne, and as we worship. Throne. Come, Lord Jesus, and take your place. Come, Lord Jesus, and come, Lord Jesus, Jesus, and take your place. Amen. Where am I pray? I want us to pray in the spirit, then we'll pray. You, can you pray with the scripture? Let's pray in the Holy Ghost for a minute. Then open your scripture. I want us to pray with the scripture that we just read. Hallelujah. Find the scripture to pray with. Let us pray. Rashinto Rasantri Sikoto Toto Bahata Kata Rasoto. Pray in the Holy Ghost. Pray in the Holy Ghost, everybody. Open your mouth and pray. Mashikara Kanta Rason to the Sika Rato Raseke to the Shiko. Mashikara Kanta the Siko to the San to the Seta. Rekoto Bakata Tata Rasan to the Siko to Rahan to the Shaker. 
Masika rasante de sikote tere shante de seho. Oh, hallelujah. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Rema, pray. In Jesus' name. Amen. Lord, thank you for this wonderful day. Lord, thank you for bringing us all here safely, O Lord. And thank you for giving us a wonderful devotion today, O Lord. I, I pray that you will help us, as it says in verse 11, O Lord, that you will, keep, you will help us to keep calm, O Lord, that only fools give in to their anger, O Lord, that we will be able to keep calm in every situation. In Jesus' name. Amen. not to look over one another as we're more than or superior to each other. As verse 13, verse 13 says, the poor and the oppressor have this in common. The Lord gives sight to the eyes of both. We're all equal in your eyes, the Lord, and you give us eyes just as equal as us one another. We all believe the same and breathe the same. And I thank you for always being with us. In Jesus' name. Father, we just want to thank you for today. It's been a good day so far. Thank you for the people. Thank you for the church, my father. Thank you for grandpa back home in Africa. Thank you for our parents, our siblings, their children, their spouses. We thank you for them, oh God. Thank you for every man, every woman in Kingdom Light Church here in America, Kingdom Light Church in Africa. Father, we just want to bless your name. Thank you, oh God. Thank you for putting your fear in our hearts. Thank you for loving us first, and we will love you back. Thank you, my Father. You have been so good to us. Thank you for opportunity that you have given us to just sit in your presence and just worship you. We are thankful. Thank you for health in our bodies. We are grateful, my Father. Thank you for the knowledge of you that every day we sit before you, we read about you in the word, and we get to know you every day. You are so, so good to us. We are grateful. We pray for strength for Daddy, my Father. You know, all the time he's out there praying, leading the people. Just be with him. Continue to guide him and protect him and bring him back home safely in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Now to the King eternal, immortal, invisible, the only wise God. Be honor and glory forever and ever. Amen. Hallelujah. Put your hands together for Jesus. Thank you for praying. Give it to us today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Put your hands together for Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That is part of what we do. Our devotion could take us up to two hours. We just sit down, we talk Bible, we sit down, we talk about what is going on. We just pray for people. And one of the things we do, we... I tell my children, close your eyes and look, in, look around the church. Who do you see? Pray for that person. So in the, as they're thinking about you, sometimes they call you by name, but they are praying for you. Every day my children do that. Uh, I'm just, I've decided in my house that I'm going to raise up intercessors. Amen. That they will intercede for the church. Every day they're here in the, in the church. They're not just coming to church. Sometimes I ask them, who did you not see today in church? We don't know why the person didn't come to church. 
and I say pray for that person because we don't know what they are going through. But God will always be with that person. Amen. So there are reasons why we pray. I just wrote down some things I want to read from my, from my notes. Glory be to God. Um, family devotion. You know, family devotion, God wants us to teach our children. As a parent, the highest responsibility that God has given you is to teach your child about him. Can we look at the book of uh, Deuteronomy chapter 6? Let's look at from 6 to 9. Hallelujah. The responsibility that God has given you as a parent is to teach your children about him. You know, it is a good thing. We are in a busy world. Everybody is in school. Father is in school. Mother is in school. Children are in school. Everybody is busy. People go to work. We are all busy. We come back. We are all so tired. But we must create time for God. Somebody say we must create time for God. We must create time for God because these days are evil. Glory be to God. If a child of 18 year old will pick up a gun to go and take another person's life, the days are evil. We don't want to bring our children that way. We can only help our children if we tell them about God. Hallelujah. Deuteronomy chapter, chapter 6. I want to read from verse 6 to 9. Let me go to my Bible here. Deuteronomy chapter 6, from verse 6 to 9. God gave us instruction, our parents, what to do. From verse 6. Let me back up a little bit to from verse 4. This is Moses addressing the children of Israel. From verse 4, Deuteronomy 6 and verse 4. He said, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. You shall love the Lord your God with all your hearts, with all your soul, and with all your strength. Verse 6, he said, these words which I command you today shall be in your heart. It shall be in your heart. One day we were, we were having our devotion and we were talking about the word of God. How we can hide the word of God in our hearts. How we are able to pull the word of God when we need that word of God. And when we were asking ourselves the question, Zoe said, I remember that scripture in 2 Timothy where he talked about God has not given us the spirit of fear. You know, she just analyzed that thing so powerfully that day and God was, God was praised. Amen. Verse 7, he said, you shall teach them diligently to your children. You shall talk about them when you sit in your house. There's something about sitting together to have family dinner. Even if you do it once in a week, there is just something about it. You know, you hold hands together to say the grace. You talk about God. You just don't know what you're going to talk about. But it's very, very key that we sit with our children around the table. Do you know the Bible has it there? That your children should be seated around your table. Glory be to God. He said, you shall teach them diligently to your children. Shall talk to them, talk of them when you sit in your house, when you walk by the way, when you're driving them to school, when you go to pick them back from school, when you are giving them a right to work, you're talking about God. You're sharing what you learned in your devotion. He said, when you lie down, that is when you go to sleep, and when you wake up in the morning, you talk about God. This is what God wants us to do. He said, you shall bind them as a sign on your hand, and they shall be as a frontlet before your eyes. You know, in my house, what I decide to do is that every room has a scripture. Every room in my house has a scripture. Every living room, bathroom, bedroom has scripture. Everywhere you are in a house, there's scripture. You lift up your eyes, there's a scripture you can see. The Bible is telling us here. He said, put them between your eyes where you can see the word of God. And he said, you shall write them on the doorpost of your house and on your gates. Scripture is never too much. You see some people, they have scriptures, even bumper stickers, scriptures. Have the word of God because that is our guide. Glory be to God. God has given us instruction to teach our children. Teach our children the ways of the Lord. So uh, there are five reasons why we must have family devotion. Uh, if I will encourage you to take notes. So uh, number one. Five reasons to have family devotion. Number one, the Bible says in Proverbs 22 and verse 6. 
Proverbs 22 and verse 6. He said, train up a child. Is that where we are there? Proverbs, Proverbs 22 and verse 6. He said, train up the child the way they should go. And when they grow old, they will not depart from it. When you're training your children, you're having family devotion. You are able to sit and talk about the word of God that you people just read. We try to break it down the little way we can. Sometimes what I do with my children after church, I ask them, what did you hear? What did pastor preach today? I know he's daddy, but don't see daddy right now. See pastor. See him as your pastor. What did pastor teach us today? What did you learn? How can you apply that to school? Every day you go to school. Sometimes they come from school. They tell me this is what happened. This happened. So how do you, how, how, how do you filter whatever happened through the word of God? I ask them that question. So when we teach our children, like the Bible says, train up your child, they're able to learn to pray. The Bible says when we teach our children, they will become wiser in life. Even in school, in the academics, permit me to use school. My children are still little. They are still in school. Glory be to God. I know some of us, even though our children are grown, they are still in school. Amen. They will, the Bible says they can know more than their teachers. Hallelujah. They can know more than their teachers. You know, like Paul, Paul was addressing his son, Timothy. He said, from a young child, you have known the Holy Scripture, which your grandmother taught you. Your grandmother, Lois, taught you. As a child, Timothy was growing up. His grandmother was there helping to raise him up. She taught him the word of God. So parents, teach your children the word of God. I encourage mothers in this church all the time. I speak to you one-on-one, -on -one and I tell you my story. I've shared this uh, testimony with so many women in the church. When my children were very young, I mean, you see them running around. All this running around you do, I've been there. I run around, you know, run around, get them to sit down. Sometimes they will run around. One day I was so discouraged. And we went, pastor went to minister in one church and we went with the children. But I was outside with the children and he was ministering. I got so discouraged. It looks like I was not going to come to church. You know, like nothing is even going on. I'm not even hearing the word of God. I don't even get to sit down because I'm running after the children. But on that day when we got home, the songs that the choir people sang, from the beginning to the end, words sang. I said, huh? You mean you were running all around, you could hear them singing? The scripture that they read, Zoe was able to say it. I'm like, oh, so that was God speaking to me. Do not be discouraged. The children are hearing. They may be running around, come to church with them. And I never stopped. That day I was so happy. I like, oh, not running around. Even if they want to climb the roof of the church, let them climb. As far as they can hear the word of God, as far as they can hear the song that they have been singing in church, come on, let us go. And I continue to, to go to church. The Bible is telling us to teach our children. Amen. Number two, family devotion help us to learn how to pray. Like we did. We read the word. Then we pray with the word. It helps our children to know how to pray, not just for themselves. Number one, it's good for them to pray for themselves. It helps them to pray for, the, our, for us, their parents. Pray for our grandparents. Pray for our teachers. Pray for situations, things that just happened around us. Like the little ones that were just killed for no reason. I mean, we pray for their families. We pray all the time. When we come together, we learn to pray. The Bible talked about Daniel. You know, Daniel and his four friends, wherever they were taken captive from, at a young age, they already knew how to pray. Amen. Because the Bible says in the book of Daniel that Daniel prayed as his custom is. You cannot just wake up and have a custom. It's something that you grow with. Hallelujah. I remember last Sunday, Dickiness Helen said, don't leave your children behind. Amen. We must not leave our children behind. In everything that we do, carry your children along. Are you praying? Don't think they are too small. They can hear. Tell them to pray. They can pray. Even if they say only in Jesus' name, that is good enough. I remember one time, Rema was young, and it was his time to pray. And a family had come to visit us from Nigeria, little Ola. And Ola, before Rema would say anything, he goes, Amen! Amen! Then uh, Rema looks, and this little boy will not stop. He said, Lord, help Ola to be quiet so I can say my prayer. <laughs> Glory be to God. So that was a very powerful moment for us. Everybody just busted out laughing. But you know, and little Ola was like, okay, he didn't know what was going on. So that amen actually ceased and Rema was able to, to say his prayer. Glory be to God. You know, number three, number three, devotion time. Devotion time actually opened door for you to talk to your children. 
because we're in a busy world, sometimes there are some, you know, there are some children, they just come because they don't want you to talk to them. They give you a certain look. Then you want to put that thing aside. But devotion time will open door. Hallelujah. When we sit on that table, you know, that thing we've been wanting to address. In a way, the Bible will just make a way for you to ask that question that you've been holding on to for too long. Don't worry about that uh, face that the child is coming with. Talk to that child. It doesn't matter how grown they are. They are under your roof. They are under your care. Amen. Devotion time opened up for us to talk to them, to instruct them to, uh, on what to do. I forgot to ask our children right now. I tell them every day we pray. We don't do drugs. After prayer, we don't do drugs. We don't smoke. We don't hang out with people who do drugs. And there's no premarital sex. I try, everybody knows, they, 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 they hear them. They watch TV. TV is something else now. Before you know even any little thing you're watching, they, 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 the media people try to sneak something in that is not supposed to be there. The children are seeing. And that is true, but we have to tell our children what it's supposed to be. If we keep it from our children, we are taking it from them. We can't rob them and be like, we are holier. No, it is what is happening in the world, but we must tell them what it's supposed to be. I remind them every day, we don't do drugs. We do not smoke. We don't keep friends with people who do drugs. They are not our friends. When anybody comes to tell me, oh, I made a new friend, or they're telling me about a name I've never heard before. Is the person smart? What is their grade? What do they do? I ask them, what about their parents? Who is their parents? Because I remember growing up with the children, growing up in school, you go to school to pick them up. Some kids, when they see you, they know whose mom you are. Amen. You hear them calling, hey, Rema, your mom is here. Hey, Zoe, your mom is here. You're wondering, the child knows me. Every child knows every parent. Every child knows every parent. We must remind our children all the time. Number four, prayer help us to select our friends. You know, um, when the children come back to, from school and they tell me about their friends, you know, we pray for them. Sometimes they tell you, they come to tell me, oh, this person's mom, something, something happened here. Or this person is dealing with this. We pray, we pray for them. Just like we intercede, we pray for them. I remember one time myself and Sister Nikki were praying for that boy who was involved in the, is it Timber Lake? Timber Lake School, we don't even know him. Because here in this church, every Thursday we pray for our children. The mothers are praying for our children. Every Thursday, except there's a program in church. If there's a program in church, we hold on. Once the program is done with, then we go back to our prayer. Every Thursday at 7 p.m., we pray for our children. Whether we know you as a child, you are in trouble somewhere, we intercede for you. That is what we do. So prayer help us to make wise choices in life. It help us to be able to choose who our friends is. It's just like in school, they have this red ribbon week where they teach children how to make wise choices. You know, they teach you every day, they tell them wear a certain t-shirt or wear a certain color. You know, they, they have a way of teaching you all those things. They are teaching them in school. Thank God for them, but we have the more responsibility to teach our children, amen. Is a family thing. Family is very key. Family is first. Because sometimes you hear people do things and you're wondering, where did they get that from? Where did they hear that from? But what are they hearing from you? You who is in church. Are you making time to teach them what they're supposed to know? You know, I, sometimes I see uh, some African parents before their children do one thing, they hit them. Before they do another thing, they do that. I see that happen. But I wonder, did you teach that child not to do that before you hit on that child? No. Before you yell on that child, did you teach the child you are not supposed to do this? We are their first teachers. Amen. We have to teach them. If we come to church and we study our Bible, we need to teach our children as well what God is putting inside us. Amen. Hallelujah. We teach them. Prayer help them to discover their purpose. Hallelujah. Let's look at uh, Jeremiah chapter 1 and verse 5. Let's look at Jeremiah chapter 1 and verse 5. This is God speaking to Jeremiah. He said, uh, before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. 
God knew you before you were formed. God knew you. So you are not a mistake in this world. Hallelujah. God loves you so, so dearly. You are too precious to God. And he said, despite the fact I know you, in that same Jeremiah 29, he said, I have a good plan for you. I have a good plan for you, for you, for you, for you. Parents, I have a good plan for you. Children, I have a good plan for you. He said, in that plan, there is a hope and there is a future. That is what plan God has for us. Amen. Then number five, family devotion, they are like investment that you make in your, in your children's spiritual growth. Amen. The children are growing. Yesterday, Ikechi graduated from high school. He's going to college. Mom is not going to go with him to college. Neither is his dad going to go with him to college. But because they have taught him to pray, he knows to wake up in the morning to just pray and not just put himself out there. That is what we gain when we teach our children. Amen. Family investment. How many of us have a bank account here? Do you, anybody have any bank account with any bank? Does anybody have a bank account? Only a few people have bank accounts. Glory be to God. So you, you have a bank account. If you need money, what do you do? You go there to withdraw. That is the investment we need to do in our children's life. We make that spiritual investment so that when they need it, when Ikechi goes to college and he needs a scripture from his spirit, he's able to withdraw it. That is why we pray. That is why we have family devotion. That is why we talk to our children one-on-one. -on -one. We encourage them. We teach them. We ask them, did you study your Bible today? What stood out to you? Is there anything you want to share with me? Do you know sometimes you learn from the children? It's not just you teaching the children. You know, sometimes it's so amazing the wisdom that God has given our children. During a family devotion, you hear them. Do you hear them just dissect the word of God for you? Glory be to God. It is so powerful to, to have our children. Amen. To, have, to hear our children read the word of God to hear our children pray with the word of God. Because another thing that family devotion does, it helps them to pray, like I said before. You know, if you read the book of uh, Genesis, the Bible talks so powerfully about Joseph. Joseph left home at the age of 17, a teenager, went to a land that he has never been before. His mother was not there. His father was not there. His brothers, you know, Joseph had a lot of brothers. They were not there with him. But he knew not to do evil against God. Why? Because they had taught him from home that this one is evil, you can't do this. This one is wrong, you can't do this. When we teach our children everywhere they go, they, they carry God with them. Inside them, that fear of God is with them. That is the kind of children we want to raise. I tell people, even as little as our little ones are in Kingdom Light Church, we are not here for daycare. We want to impact spiritual things into our children. Teach them the way of the Lord. By the time they live here, they have a scripture in their mouth. By the time they are praying or singing hallelujah, they have a scripture in their mouth. Glory be to God. The Lord will bless us. Hallelujah. The Lord will help us. Amen. You know, if you did not hear anything this morning, make an investment in your children's spiritual growth so that wherever they go, they are able to make withdrawal when the need arises. Glory be to God. Put your hands together for Jesus. <laughs> hallelujah, hallelujah. I'll bring back pastor. Amen. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Put your hands together one more time for Pastor V. Hallelujah. God is a good God. Amen. Hallelujah. Our God is a good God. Amen. Amen. Um, I want us to understand something very clearly. Uh, if your greatest investment in life in your children's life is outside teaching them the word of God. You have actually dug a grave for your children already without knowing. It is very important for us to know that the day and age that we are in, uh, especially as a believer, as a believer, your primary goal, because many of us 
we would have been further in our work with God except that we didn't have the privilege to be taught or we veered off. But when you understand that Christianity becomes easy when there is no much baggages that you have to deal with. Glory be to God. Are, are you with me? When you don't have baggages you have to deal with, it is more beautiful, easier for you to fulfill purpose and destiny. You know, many times I have sat back and I've even shared with people, I wish I, I knew or I wish I discovered that I was supposed to be a pastor from when I finished high school. I would not have wasted time to go to any other field of education. I would have gone straight to the area of my purpose. I, I, do you understand what I'm saying now? Because all the investment of time going to college, then going to do certain jobs. I graduated high school since 1985. Yes. Just imagine after high school, 1985, I went to Bible school. We will not be celebrating 12 years of ministry. No. It would have been something else. The point is, when we teach our children in the ways of God, they will discover purpose. And the greatest discovery for any child for your children is to discover their purpose to discover what they were created to do what they were created to be it is very very important so as fathers as mothers we have to take the place of studying the word for ourselves and then communicating to our children because first as parents if your strength or the strength of your marriage is not in the word, you are digging a sinking sand for yourself. Don't ever believe the love of a man or the love of a woman whose love for God is not greater than their love for you. If you find a man or if you find a woman who doesn't have a higher love for God than the love for her husband, that woman you will know one day what happened to Job. You will know one day what happened to Lot. I was meditating and I found out that hmm, Job's wife, Lot's wife. And I saw that both of them, their name was just three letters. I said, ah, maybe it is dangerous to marry somebody with a three letter word name. <laughs> but that's just a joke, you know. But you see, when it came down to it, Job's wife enjoyed the wealth, the resources, everything. But when trouble came, it was very clear. One was saying, though he slay me, I will still serve him. One was saying, curse him and die. In same, the same house. That is why you must vet the weight of your love for God. Whether husband or wife, be very sure both of you, your greatest competition of who you love the most should not be your wife. Who you love the most should not be your husband. Who you love the most should be God. Who you love the most should be your word or the word of God, not the other person. When you find someone loving you more than they love God, that love is fake and fickle. Don't trust such a love. Because when it comes down to obeying God, Lord, get out of the city. Trouble is coming. Lord, because she was raised in the house, even though he was not that strong in his spiritual life, because he was raised in the environment of the word of God, guess what? It was easier for Lord to obey and leave the city, but the wife was stuck with materialism. Now, I am not bashing on women because there are men who are worse in their commitment to God than women are. So, if we are going to raise a generation, we are sharing with Pastor Dominic. Do you know that that young kid that went and he came from a home? He came from a home. 
The word of God has the capacity to build your conscience. The word of God, there are things that when you are groomed with the word of God, there are certain things you wouldn't do. There are certain things you can't, you can't find yourself doing. That, the power of God, the prayer of your parents, the prayer that you pray for your children has the way of holding and restricting them. There are many times I was drifting so far away. It was the prayer of my parents that pulled me back. I'm telling you the truth. So the energy that you must exert in this life, in this age and time that we're in, please and please stop putting all your weight in making money. Money answered all things, but money doesn't solve all problems. Because money can buy you a house, but it can't buy you a home. Money can buy you a doctor, but money can buy you good health. I am telling you right now, money or education can give you a great job, but education can't give you joy. So why, where are you investing your time? You can't be a believer and you are not really proving to your children that this is the most important thing. How can they honor a God that you are not showing them that you honor? They can't honor God like that. It's not possible. There are certain things that when you and your children are reading from the word, they know that when you call them, did you notice? They know that the Bible says, spare the rod. Yeah. Of course, uh, if you have a little bit of African wisdom, you know there is going to be some spanking today in our house, right? Uh, because there was a lot of display of foolishness here today. And they already know that we are going to have a, a family meeting today. Glory be to God. It is necessary. It is very, very necessary. That is what you do as a parent. Your children should not leave your life or leave home without a record of how much investment of the word of God and discipline you are putting them. At 53, when I talked to my father... I always, there was, there has never been a day I has finished talking to my father without living with wisdom. Just last week, we were talking, and you know, and he said, you know, there are two things that God instituted so solidly that no matter what the devil does, he can't kill it, even though he's trying all his best. He said, do you know what those things are? I said, well, let me know. He says, church and marriage. He said those two things are the things that you should pay more attention to in your ministry. Pay attention to the church. Pay attention to marriages. Because this is where the devil fights the most. But guess what? He will never win that battle. He hates marriage. In our discussion, he said, because marriage, you remember last week, we talked about how we are the bride of Christ. He said, because mar the church, is, the marriage is the practical uh, wife of God. Just so, how do I put it down? As the wife or marriage is in the natural, so is the church is spiritually. What a wife is to a husband is what a church is to God. So the same way the enemy hates you as a believer, that is how he hates marriages. And every time you act on marriages, what he's trying to say to Christ is, look, I am doing something to harm that your bride. The only thing that can keep us is the word of God. Please, if you are really going to prove or show that you are very responsible, the first place of responsibility is the word of God. If you are not a believer, fine. But if you are a believer, you must understand that no matter how much your children are educated, one error outside of Christ can ruin their life. One error can mess up everything. That is why the greatest investment is in the word of God for our children. Glory be to God. I, I, are you following what I'm saying? Because you see, 
when children grow and live, when you get married, you have children, after a while, they will leave you. What they leave you, when they leave you, there must be something that is strongly registered in their spirit. What do you think will be a conversation between me and my father at this age, if not for the word of God? Do you understand that? Yeah, the only, the, what our conversation is interesting, exciting, because there is a book, there is an eternal book that both he and I invest time in it. He invested time in it, and then many times we even challenge each other, and then I will tell him, no, I don't think that is the correct interpretation. He said, well, you need to go and read again, and then maybe next time when we talk, we'll talk about it. So I said, okay, we'll come back and we argue it out. And he said, well, maybe that is an um, American version of your own interpretation. Uh, uh, that is not how it is. So we keep like that. It is important for us to know this, though, before we pray for the children. Today, we're going to anoint the children. Every family, you came with your oil. Did you come with your oil? Okay, I have an instruction to do something with that. But the instruction is that it is only our children that will be anointed. If you are more concerned about building your children's career or educational life more than you are concerned about their spiritual life, you are a hypocrite. If you are more concerned about building their educational life or their uh, career than you are in building their spiritual life. We, the days we're in, the days we're in, the days we're in, have you heard certain things about children that you, at your own heart, you're wondering? Let me tell you something. Nobody, nobody will sleep well if their own child goes to do such evil. No. Unfortunately, you can't do anything. You didn't put that investment in them. You didn't put it so you don't expect them like you heard. They can't draw it out. They're supposed to be able to make certain decisions and certain choices in life. The word of God gives them that opportunity to do that. If you are more concerned about how well your family is doing financially, you will soon discover that money only answers to things, but it doesn't solve the issues of life. Don't be more concerned about that. Be more concerned about the, the spiritual blocks of your family. How solid is the family? You know, when you go through things in life, what holds you together is your spiritual life. If we didn't have a robust spiritual life, we would not be celebrating 20 years of marriage today. Neither will we be celebrating that my wife is alive today. Why? Because there is an enemy that will come after you. If you really want your marriage to work, pay attention to your spiritual life. Because that beautiful lady that you marry, and when you married, if you're a man, maybe your attention was more to the Coca-Cola body. But I want to announce to you that very soon, that Coca-Cola or Coca-Cola bottle will become a Coca-Cola can. The Lord will give you understanding. Yeah, 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 yeah. If you are not spiritual, uh, your mind will be stuck with the bottle, but it, it, as you continue to grow, the bottle will turn to a can. It's still Coca-Cola, but it's a different <laughs> container now. What do you do when it is no longer the Coca-Cola bottle, but a Coca-Cola can? And then, then, then there's a challenge to pick the size of dress and you're blaming the manufacturer. No, they have, it is not that they don't have your size. It's just that uh, something has happened. It takes spirituality to hold down your marriage. Listen, I'm telling you, I'm telling you, money doesn't hold a marriage because Bill Gates couldn't hold one. It's not money. If your wife doesn't pray, you're at risk. If your husband is not praying, you're at risk. Stop 
Just stop deceiving yourself. The capacity to stay in love is not given to man. True love is only given by God. You have to spend time with God in order to have that nature enter you and then you can love the way you are supposed to love. If you are not a praying wife, if you are not a praying husband, wife, you are at risk because temptations will come. What will stop your husband from misbehaving is not because you are so pretty. No, 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 no. Whether you like it or not, there are many fine women than you. There are many wonderful guys that look sharper than you. It will take spirituality to hold you in morality and in decency. If that is lacking, your marriage is at risk. Don't worry about the beautiful house. Don't worry about the beautiful car. If there is no spirituality, you are operating something that has no capacity to hold you down. Because marriage is a spiritual thing. It's not a natural thing. That is why whatever you will do, spend time. If she is not praying, you pray. If he's not praying, you pray. Somehow God is so faithful that you will not have two lukewarm people together. God is faithful. He will raise one to stand in a gap and keep praying and keep interceding because that is what it takes. Are you with me? There were many things I couldn't get myself to do even though I was in the middle of it. Because I didn't see it in our house. I told you how I will go to the nightclub. I didn't sit down in the house, but I went anyway. So, But this is the message. Cigarette, alcohol. I will be holding one in this hand. I'm holding one in this hand. But I couldn't get it into my mouth. Something won't let me smoke. Something won't let me drink. In the midst of it, why? The atmosphere where I was raised forbids that thing. That there are things that you... See, you can be so educated, but your education is nothing compared to how civilized Satan is. Do you know how many demons live in your neighborhood? Do you know how many evil live around the city where you live? Spirits can penetrate. When your children go to school, do you know who they mingle with when they came back? When you go to the store, do you know what atmosphere you enter before you came back home? You got to know how to be spiritual. And that is what it takes. That is what it means to be a believer. He said to Abraham, because of you, all the families of the earth will be blessed. When God finds a man who will stand strong, hallelujah, if you are a single mother, be a single mother that your warfare speak volume in the realm of the spirit. Glory be to God. Do you know what I'm saying? Because in the realm of the spirit, it is not whether you are single or married. Amen? Hallelujah. It is that you are releasing incense into the atmosphere. I pray that we will be a people who will not pay too much attention or focus all our energy on the natural and the physical. We are too busy to do this. Are you really that busy or are you just careless? Too busy to pray? Too busy to go to church? Too busy to lay hands on your children? Too busy to make decrees over your children? When you are taking them to school, when you wake up in the morning, what are you speaking? In the middle of the night, I go into the rooms of the children. Oh, they are sleeping. No. I'm rebuking devils. Do you know what I'm saying now? You go in there, every spirit, every power that have secretly entered into this environment, I rebuke you, I break your influence over this family, over my children, in the name of Jesus Christ. What am I doing? I am establishing a new generation of people who will rise and God will be first in their life. God will be their biggest example that no matter what happens, if they go, you know, it was this uh, AKG that uh, my wife was mentioning, before his graduation, he came to my office, he said he has a concern. 
I said, what is the concern? He said, I'm about to go to college now. Uh, I don't know how I'm going to handle myself there because I'm going to be meeting with all kinds of people. I was so happy that day. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. I said, okay, you're not the first. Amaka spoke to me. Choma spoke to me. We've talked so much with these children. And I told Ikechi, I said, let me tell you something. First, if classes start at 8, your own class starts at 7. So, by 6 o'clock, you have started your own class, which is called Bible study. Most of the scriptures that I'm quoting now, I knew them before I became born again. Because I was raised in a house where I was Bible study, Bible reading, scripture. In school, we have what is, what's that? Bible knowledge. Bible knowledge. In secondary school, in primary school, we were taught Bible. Whether you like it or not, Bible is entering you. Glory be to God. Do you know why a 10-year-old, a 10-year-old rebel will wrap themselves with explosive and be ready to go and kill? You know why? It's because they were indoctrinated. It's only Christians that say they are too young. Oh, they are babies. That's why from the beginning we say our children's church is not children's church. There is no children's Bible. The only difference between children's Bible and adult Bible is a picture they put there. Period. Because there is no children's devil. If you find a children's devil, please tell him, bring it to me. I want to be a children so that <laughs> I'll be related with that children's devil. Because the devil that I'm dealing with now is older than me. <laughs> and it's not fair. Is, it not, is the devil not older than you? So if we have a children's devil, let's relate with that children's devil. Life will be easier. Do you know what I'm saying? I said, no, before you go to class, do your religious discipline. I grew up, I have uncles, cousins who are Muslims. I know what is called Amaji. When you hear from Nigeria, you hear what is called Amajri. Yeah. At age three to five, yeah. sir. Right. Of course, you, you, you grew up in the north too. By 5 a.m., a five-year-old has left his father's house to go to the school where they will teach them Arabic. So from age five, he has been indoctrinated. He has believed something. That belief has crystallized so much that he can die. Not only die, he can kill and die. We as Christians, we are not to kill for what we believe. We should believe enough to die for it. Because if what you believe, you can't die for, you haven't believed yet. But how did they get to that? Indoctrination 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 from a childhood but you can't give what you don't have if you don't have it you can't give it let's stay with it let's stay with it we will raise a new breed of people are you aware that this prophecy is stronger than any prophecy in your life that in the next 50 years all of us who are here that are adult I know you will say, oh, God forbid. Don't worry. In the next 50 years, let's meet again and see how many of us will be here. <laughs> that means this one's where seen I will be the one holding the microphone. This one where seen I will be the one preaching. This one where seen I will be the one. Glory be to God. The day word suggested that he wanted to go to a Christian university. I did not, I, nobody suggested, nobody. He came to me and said he wanted to go. That is the school he wanted to go to. I said, what? I said, God, wherever money has entered. <laughs> if I have to sell all my shoes and all my suit for him to, yes, just because. I'm like, oh, something has entered him that this is the choice he wants to make. Do you understand what I'm saying now? Let's be the Christian that we are. Other religions, they are not just... If, let me tell you something. If you see those other religions in America here, they did not all come here because they're looking for green pasture. Many of them are here on a mission. But we, 
We are here for Benjamin. And if that money will stand between me and God, God has to go. I need to go get the money. Really? No, that is not how it's supposed to be. God has to be forced. If we put it in our children, we will see the result of it. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. The word of God is one thing that does work in people. You don't have to be chasing or tracking them down. If you're putting in them, it will be working. It's a person you're putting in them. The Holy Spirit is in them. It will be convicting them of sin. Hallelujah. Don't forget that scripture says, train up a child. It didn't say raise up a child first. So it's not raising. Because what we're doing today is we're just raising children. The Bible didn't say you should raise children. It says you should train your children. That means there are going to be days that they won't like you. If you are so concerned about your children liking you and loving you, you are the worst parent that has ever existed. Their children, there's nothing like I like you. No, likeness will happen after. Right now, we're not dealing with likeness. I am supposed to train you as a believer. Train them up. Then he says, when they grow up. So, when they have not grown, don't worry. Because there might be evidences of foolishness. Because they haven't grown. Because the promise says, when they grow up, they will not depart from it. Hallelujah. If you don't believe that, look at your pastor. It is when I grew up that this truth that I was fighting with everything I've got. I told you before, the first and the last time me and my father went into a serious altercation, vocal, of course, you know, <laughs> was that when he suggested that our last born, we go to Bible school. That day was the worst day of my father's life. I said, not in this family ever with anyone ever, ever offer my dead body. Would anybody be a pastor again in this family? He wasn't talking about me. Oh. It's, no, it's not me. It's my only brother. So God said, hey, you are fighting like that. Don't worry. Yeah. On the day of my ordination, I got a phone call. I, I knew it. He said, how about that thing we talk about the other time? I said, Baba, it's, don't worry. We'll talk about it sometime. Guess what? The, it, God did miracle. The one that I was fighting for, he just graduated master's degree in divinity this month. So I was fighting that nobody again. God said, no, we'll have to. <laughs> and my elder sister, her first son, is a pastor of one of our churches in Nigeria. Wow. Amen? Let me tell you something. I wish, if I have any regret in my life, is the fact that I didn't discover my purpose on time. I wish I knew this when I was acting a fool. Whatever is your purpose, make sure you discover it. Whatever is your children's purpose, help them to discover it. It was not Moses who discovered his purpose. It was his mother and father that saw that he was a unique child. They protected that baby. The Bible says they saw that he was a proper child. They began to guide that baby and protected the baby. Do you understand what I'm saying now? Help your children to discover it. There is nothing as beautiful as being in the purpose of God. In your home, what is more important is not happiness. Because you can have money and be happy, but you can never have joy until you're in the purpose of God. <laughs> you, it, there's no way. That, until you line up with what you were created to do, you will be grinding in life. Because there's no any sophisticated vehicle that can function in Jopu Lake because it wasn't designed as a boat, even though it might have tires. It might have engine, but it was not meant to be in the river. Your purpose 
is what is key. Just let your children. And for those of us who are not from America descent, let me tell you one of the massive secrets I've discovered. Pastor Don, yesterday we talked in this light. One of the secrets of things that have happened in America is that America is a system where people start early. People start early. It's only in Africa where you are, you are doing something. Why are you in a hurry? Why are you rushing to? Why are you? No. I came here, I saw people who are, was twice their age. They are almost grandmother already. <laughs> they start early here. Give your children that good foundation to start early, but starting early with their purpose. Let it be what you know God wants them to be. If that is the thing, they will succeed in it. Glory be to God. Say, Lord, give me the grace to be responsible. To be responsible. To be a watchman and a watchwoman over my household. Give me the grace to be responsible. A watchman and a watchwoman over my household. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Father, I pray for every man and every woman here today. The grace to be a responsible father, a responsible mother, responsible parents, responsible adult in the name of Jesus Christ. This week, this week, this week, feed their spirit with a different energy to the glory of your name. We thank you. And we give you praise in the name of Jesus Christ. In Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, you see, it was God gives instruction step by step. I was just doing this instruction, what he said. But now he has added another instruction for me to follow with that. So this week, it's a demand. So I need you guys to be praying for me because I've been put on a fast for this purpose. So I'll be fasting between now and Sunday, okay? Please be praying for me because this is very significant. Uh, like I said always, I don't want to know what will happen if we don't obey this. Uh -huh, I don't want to know that. I just want to obey this so that we stop whatever is supposed to happen. Is it not better to obey? Yeah, so it's better for me. Father, I receive grace. And this all, from now until Sunday, the same way Aaron's rod went into the holiest of all, and it brought him distinction. Every all that is here, whatever has hindered them before, whatever has blocked them before, may this all, may this all, may this all, may this all be saturated with the power of the Holy Ghost to bring exemption from evil and distinction in life. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Glory be to God. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Thank you guys so much for listening to this message. We do hope you were truly blessed by it. Please don't forget to like this video, comment, subscribe, share with people, friends, family, colleagues, everyone around you. And also don't forget to turn on your post notification bell. It's right here so that you can get notified whenever we post a video. Thank you guys so much once again and do have a blessed week. Bye-bye.